this is Ghana tonight here on your election command center coming up next some sitting members of parliament risk losing their seats before the end of their turn should the NDC carry through their intention to have the speaker make a determination on the status of those MPs who have filed to contest as independent candidates in the December polls we have in fact, about three of them who, who have decided that they want to go the route as an independent candidate, even though they are seven as incumbent members of parliament in this eighth parliament. And there is the independent candidate for the Fomina constituency, the second deputy speaker of parliament, who is now going to contest as the NPP candidate. That, that presents a certain situation which the former minority leader, Harna Idrisu, is seeking to test the law on this matter making reference to precedents and what's happened before. But this is your election command center. A former minority leader, Harun Idrisu, has said that the NDC caucus of parliament will have the speaker of parliament make a determination on whether sitting members of parliament who have filed to contest the upcoming elections as independent candidates should continue to stay in the house or vacate their seats as MPs. Now, in the Tamil South Members of Parliament's view, such MPs must vacate their seats. And this is why it makes the point. Take a look. The Parliament of Ghana will reconvene. And when it reconvenes, I am very certain that Parliament and Ghana will go through a major constitutional test and that constitutional test is that the ADC minority must become the majority for Winners Day next week. And I assume, and this must happen if there is constitutional and legal proprietary in Ghana. Because any nuanced interpretation of Article 97 provides that if a member of parliament on a political party ticket like MPP defects and fails to be independent, that MP ceases to be a member of parliament. And if an independent member of parliament, by virtue of the provision of Article 97, sub clause G, an independent joins a political party, that independent loses constitutional recognition and does not belong to parliament. And even if an NDC candidate, MP, defects to become an independent, he ceases to be a member of parliament. Therefore, we will invoke the speaker's proper and true interpretation of Article 97. Well, that's Harun Idrisu there. He makes a point of making reference to Article 97 1G uh, of the 1992 Constitution, and we're going to show you that as we go on here on Ghana tonight to put the issues in context. And there's a reason why. And he makes the reference to the precedence that was set uh, by Speaker Michael Quay in the case of the former Member of Parliament who eventually was elected as Second Deputy Speaker of Parliament was a, an independent candidate, decided to contest that 2020 elections as an independent candidate after he fell out with the MPP. Now they've reconciled and he's going to contest that, this election on the ticket of the NPP. That's one of the four. The second person is Cynthia Morrison, Member of Parliament for the Aguna West constituency on the ticket of the MPP in this eighth parliament. She has decided to go as an independent candidate, even though over the weekend we saw an attempt to have her injuncted to not contest it in that election. She indicated that that is not going to stop him. Then also, we have the Suhum Member of Parliament, who is the, also the incumbent MP in this 8th Parliament, Obuafo Kojo Asante, who was decided to go as an independent candidate in the December 7 election. That's what you see on the screen right there. And then also, the MPP is not alone, even though they have, they have three of their people that's persons parliamentary candidates in there. Then you have the NDC, incumbent NDC MP for our Memphis Central constituency, Peter Yao Kwachi Aka, who has also decided that it wants to go independent. If you recall, the Memphis Central constituency NDC had to rerun that primary just a little over a month ago when um, the uh, wife of the musician, Keche, 
well, one of them um, also won that primary. And because of the issues that characterized that period, he decided that he was, he was going to go independent. If you recall, the, the, the courts were in the process of just hearing this case, but the party took a decision that if you, they want to go with the calendar of the court, they might just miss the period of filing. So they decided to then step in to, to call for a rerun, which um, he lost, and he's decided to go independent as well. So these are the four. And, and when you see how things are playing out, Harun Adrisu is very clear in his mind that um, this is um, going to be considered by the Speaker of Parliament. We'll see how things play out because Parliament is set to resume in the next 48 hours, all things being equal. And to, to get a bit more perspective into this matter, a private legal practitioner freshly called to the bar, uh, my, my producer here on Ghana tonight, Dennis Poberi Wadam Esquire. He's joining us. Lawyer, good evening. Alfred, mm. he's still the journalist, you know. Yeah, it's Dennis. you know, I'm just, I just said, I just have to say <laughs> anyway, that. Thank you so much for that. As always. Now, yes. what, what, what's, what's, what's with this issue, first of all? Well, so we are likely to run into yet another legal tussle with this particular matter because mm. already the conversation out there is divided. Whereas some or members of the NDC, especially the former minority leader, insist that, I mean, with what has happened so far mm. and with the provision that he's quoted, Article 97 of the Constitution, yes, 97, 1G, especially, he believes that for all those members of parliament, I mean, still members of parliament, who are either going to run as independent or mm -hmm. who are independent now and they are now going to run on the tickets of party should vacate their seats. He says that tomorrow when parliament reconvenes, he is going to, I mean, his side of the house would have the speaker make a determination on that. But let's look at what Article 97 says. I mean, 97, 1G especially. That a member of parliament shall vacate their seats in parliament if the member leaves the political party of which they were a member at the time of their election to parliament and joins another party or if they seek to remain in parliament as an independent member. Mm. So this is the article or the constitutional provision on which the member of parliament for Tamale South right. says that based on this, the four MPs that you put out on the screen, mm -hmm. three of whom are going to run as independent candidates, one, an independent candidate now going to run on the ticket of the MPP, must, by virtue of this, um, vacate their seats. I, I mean, I've heard some M M MPP MPs who think otherwise. However, there's precedent to this. And tell me about it. And then the argument made out there is that because a precedent has been set already, mm. it should not be a difficulty again. Right. And this has to do with the member of parliament for Formina, one of the persons that you just showed. Yeah. In his case, he was a member of the MPP. But for some reason, internal party wranglings, mm -hmm. he decided to run as an independent candidate. When he filed to run as an independent candidate, the MPP wrote a letter to parliament notifying the speaker that the seat be declared vacant. Yeah. Because with regards to their constitution, there's a provision that says that if a member of parliament or a member of the party decides to run as an independent candidate, mm. then that person automatically forfeits their membership of the party. So they make the argument that if he's not a member of our party, we have deemed him to automatically forfeit his membership. Right. Then parliament should go ahead and invoke Article 97, 1G. Then, this was the ruling of the then Speaker of Parliament, mm -hmm. right. Professor Errol Mike Okui. And this is just the part that speaks directly to what we are discussing now. Mm -hmm. He said, with all intents and purposes, he is no longer a member of the party. He has oh. pronounced himself publicly as an independent and has filed his papers to compete against the party in his official candidate as an independent candidate on 7th December 2020. He goes mm -hmm. on to say that, having forfeited the membership of the party on whose ticket he was elected to parliament, the operative language of the constitution is that he shall, which is mandatory, vacate his seats in parliament. And that was how come the MP for Formina lost mm -hmm. his seats at see. that material moment. I see. So this was at the, at the instance 
of, of the NPP. NPP, yes. The NPP wrote to Professor Michael Quay. Yes. That expel this former MP. Sure. Because he's decided to go independent. Yes. And Speaker Michael Quay. Acted and they, st they on started that. off by citing a provision in their own constitution, which is Article 93 of the NPP constitution, which right. talks about member, uh, forfeiting membership. Okay. And under this circumstance, it talks about somebody running as an independent candidate or somebody supporting an independent candidate when the party has sponsored a candidate. You mm. recall, it's under the same circumstances that some members of the party now, the members like Hoops Nadoye, members like um, Bohame Asamoa, the same provision of the MPP constitution was used to, I mean, they forfeited their membership based on that. So that's largely the argument. But what we are now dealing with is now the question of whether an MP from the other side can, can notify parliament that this is what is happening. So let's declare the, 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 the seat of that MP vacant. The, and, and you, you want to hold it right there. And, and, and uh, Dennis Poirberry, well done. And uh, at the answer to that question, we want to seek it right now. Right, yes. The Honorable Harun Idriso is joining us on the telephone right now. Honorable Harun Idriso, good evening. Thank you for joining us here on Ghana tonight. Good evening, and thank you very much for the opportunity and to your esteemed listeners. Fantastic. So, you, you heard Dennis, uh, the, the private legal practitioner here, put this matter in perspective, that in the instance where you make reference to this precedence set by Speaker Michael Quay's ruling uh, on this former member of parliament's case, it was at the instance of the MPP. The MPP wrote to Parliament, wrote to the Speaker to take that decision. Now, in your case, the MPP hasn't written to, to Parliament or, the, or, the, or the, uh, the Speaker to take this decision of expelling Cynthia Morrison and then also Obafo Kujasante, but you want to do that. How does that apply? The Constitution of Ghana, the 1992 Constitution, is the good norm of the Republic and the most important law that the President, Speaker, members of Parliament have all sworn to uphold and to uphold the laws of Ghana. Take a careful reading, reading, I don't say interpretation, of Article 971G of the Constitution. In constitutionalism and constitutional law, the provisions of Article 971G can best be described as the rule against defection. It is provided in the Constitution so that members who are elected to Parliament on the ticket of a political party or as independent candidate cannot just wake up and defect and cause as they wish. So it is to preserve the sanctity of the four-year mandate and the sanctity of the ticket in which you were elected to represent a particular group of people in parliament. Now, if you read Article 971G well, it contemplates, as we currently have, mm -hmm. three members of parliament from the New Patriotic Party, one member of parliament from the NDC. And it is that in one instance, you have an elected MPP member of parliament now choosing to file to be independent. What does that mean within the ambit of Article 971G? Presumptively, irrebatably, it means that that person has chosen that I no longer belong to the political party that brought me to parliament. Right. And therefore, cannot continue to hold himself as elected member of parliament. Now, take your time again. I'm just doing a nuanced interpretation of it. Mm -hmm. Read Article 97 well, the words. It says, a member of parliament shall vacate his seat. Shall vacate his seat. Yes. It didn't say me. It didn't say me. Mm -hmm. Now, two, read the MPP letter well. What did they rely on? They relied on the same Article 97, even though for the purposes of their own party constitution. But they were also looking at the weight 
of Article 97. 97. So it does not lie in me saying NDP or NDC should write. I swore an oath to uphold the Constitution and to uphold the laws of Ghana. That is why, decisively, my argument is that any member of parliament who chooses to belong to a political party that he didn't belong to at the time of his election, by virtue of Article 971G, loses constitutional recognition. Uh, I, I just want to constitutional recognition. I, I, I see. But what do you say so to those lawyers? Independent now runs on a political party ticket or a political party elected MP now runs as independent or a political party run independent, they lose constitutional recognition on a true and proper interpretation of the ordinary meaning of 971G. We may invoke the Speaker of Parliament to interpret it if it is part of our standing orders or the best forum will be for somebody to challenge the Supreme Court. But that will be after they have been asked to vacate their seat. If in they fact, feel that they have not been dealt with in a manner which is just and lawful, then they can go to the Supreme Court. But this is a very, very simple, unambiguous provision of the Constitution that must be upheld and respected. Don't forget, political parties are also bound by the 1992 Constitution. Mm -hmm. And the NPP is bound by the provisions of the 1992 Constitution. Read Article 55 well, which is on political parties of Ghana. And therefore, it is not lie within me to tell MPP to write to Parliament, whether they write or not, has the conduct or action of an elected member of Parliament infringed on the 1992 Constitution. That now, is a matter... Uh, right, I but, I, I, but, but and I want to run this other legal proposition by you as well. Uh, others who make that strong contention that only the High Court, not the Speaker, or members of Parliament, or political parties can declare no, a parliamentary no. seat vacant. High Court on matters of fundamental human rights, yes. Exclusive interpretation of the Constitution lies in the bosom of the Supreme Court. But... When do you interpret an instrument when the words are upset, when the meaning of the words does not make sense to you as an ordinary person? So you read 97 one. what is your understanding of it? That if you belong to a party at the time of an election and you decide to join another political party or go independent, have you respected the tenants? that provision of the Constitution. It is, it is not for Haruna Ejizi to decide, but it is for Haruna Ejizi to raise it in pursuit of my respect for the Constitution of Ghana and for the laws of Ghana. But, but certainly you and make the, the point that... It, it, to take decision as appropriate. Right. If this decision is so taken, it will be subject to judicial review, possibly. Who wants judicial review? Why are you raising judicial review? The Constitution is clear that vacate your seat if you do A, B, C, D. Vacate your seat. Like in your instance, <laughs> your wife tells you that if you do A, B, C, D, you'll be divorced. Then you do A, B, C. You have to be divorced. Unless she decides to start crying that don't get divorced. And the cry will not help in this instance. That's just for the humor of it. That the point has been made. Are we in infringement? Are we supposed to uphold the constitution or to hold it in breach? Well, we'll see how the, the coming days will look like because you have indicated that when parliament resumes, you're going to do this. And um, it will be interesting to see because there's also an NDC one MP. Of, the, one the, of the, the persons I've been trying to reach to get an opinion myself is. Uh, uh, Professor Kumodo of the University of Ghana, and uh, I'll talk to other uh, 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 Professor Abuchi and others. But yes, and, I, and then Professor Kukwaza as well. Professor Kukwaza, yes. Yes, yes, Yanu and Co. But uh, let's see. In any case, the famous of the Constitution, why did they put this provision there? That's why I describe it as a rule against defection.
Yes. I've heard people argue that they are now going to be independent in future. Who cares about their future? So at that time, when they go and they are elected, they are not defected. Well, you see, that, that's, that's, a, that's another that legal position that's been espoused. That, yes, that the so decision... Does not arise at all. You see, so uh, I, I'm, I'm happy. I want to see how the people will respond to this. You see, you can't have a law which suits you when you want to use it, and then you abandon it when it does not suit you. That is a quagmire the MP2 will be subjected to. We'll see how things play out. And I appreciate rule of law is rule of law. There's no rule of the MPP. I thank you very much for your time joining us here on Ghana tonight. Aaron Idriso is uh, the Member of Parliament for the Tamale South constituency and then also the former minority leader, right? And, and you, 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 make, you, you hear the points he makes about... Yeah. For him, it is clear. It's, it's clear. It's cast in stone. Yes, and yes, yes, if yes. you do A, B, C, D, you certainly must go. Yes. But of course, the speaker would have to make that determination and, mm. and as to whether he will go with his predecessor mm. or he will take a different route. I mean, that will be determined in the coming days. But of course, there are some who also make the case that the MPP must stick by its own principles. Because if John Boydou then had written this letter to categorically state that by the conduct of the Member of Parliament for Formula then had forfeited his, his, um, his seat or forfeited his membership of the party and to that extent, Parliament should declare his seat vacant. Uh, many are making the argument that they should still hold by that same principle mm -hmm. and perhaps write the same letter or a similar letter to Parliament to announce these independent candidates. But, I mean, we look forward to see what the coming days will present in this particular situation. Certainly so. And, and let's hear from Obafo Kujua Santu, the uh, Suhum Member of Parliament, incumbent MP. He's decided to go independent. He's one of four persons, four persons. on this. Let, let's hear him. They need the help. They petitioned me. And then they said that it doesn't matter what has happened. I should come and come and serve them. I should come and come and continue my work. So if you are talking about what, I mean, sort of the impetus, what, I mean, my voice, what, 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 what is pushing me to do what I'm doing or to do this declaration, then all that I will say is that it is wrong people. One person can say that you are going for independence. One person. Can one person go for independence? I'm asking you, can one person go for independence? One person cannot go for independence. Right? Yeah. It is the base. It is what? The base. I have only one vote. I have only one vote. So I cannot stand here. That's the incumbent Suhum member of parliament who lost at the primaries to uh, Frank Esiru Queen, Colin Protozwa, who is uh, the director of political affairs uh, at the office of the chief of staff at the presidency. Uh, going into this election as well. So we'll see, especially with the Agona West one involving uh, Cynthia Morrison and comment MP and this court case and how things are playing out. See how, how things go in the coming days on this. But coming up next year on Ghana Tonight, the Electoral Commission is set to exhibit the, vote, the provisional voters register again after correcting errors, pointing out the issues that came up as a result of what the NDDC put out. And uh, it's one thing that we've been following quite closely. Uh, they had already given an indication of what they intend to do going forward. And then also uh, the errors that the NDC had, um, had pointed out in this first provisional register that was exhibited. The NPP had also indicated they had found some errors as well and they were going to present it to the Electoral Commission. But then again, the NDC was quite vocal on this matter. And this is what we're going to come in, coming up next here on Ghana Tonight. And um, let's engage a bit further on this matter because earlier today, the Electoral Commission put out a press statement. And we have portions of that statement is going to be on your screen right now. Electoral Commission makes the point about the re-exhibition of the Provisional Voters Register. And you recall that they had given this notice on the 1st of October when they issued the press statement that they were going to re-exhibit the Provisional Voters Register online. So this is just to reinforce the point that from tomorrow, October 15, and the, to the end of Saturday, October 19, 2024, they are going to re-exhibit the Provisional Voters Register that contains the corrections of the errors that the NDC pointed out within this period. So from Tuesday, 15 October, voters can check the details via short code 
star 711 star 51 hash free of charge so this is the ussd code they're using voters can also check their details from the website that's then they give the website the ec.gov.gh click on the pop-up link and at the bottom right corner of the screen and enter the 10 digit voter id number to receive the id that's the voter registration details also the public should note that the, any discrepancies identified must be reported to the district office of the commission where they are registered uh, voters for correction once the re-exhibition exercise ends the online re-exhibition exercise ends on saturday 19th october voters will still be able to check their details online but cannot and take a be, notice of this you cannot request for correction of their details so even though you can continue checking your details after the 19th you cannot request for correction and the political parties are required to use the template provided by the commission to them to submit any discrepancies identified during the re-exhibition period so bear in mind this re-exhibition of the voters register that purportedly captures the corrected errors that the ndc identified is going to be exhibited online and and not offline as the ndc was also proposing so you do this ussd code and then you go online click the link and then it's going to happen so it's starting from tomorrow but there are concerns about for instance the hard to reach communities and other parts of this country where there's no mobile phone connectivity how can they take part in this online re-exhibition to check if there are errors as well and then all the issues that has to do with even those who who have smartphones and they want to go online they have their own challenges those who want to use the ussd code as well if you don't have mobile connectivity in some of these areas across the country that's going to be a limitation as well and and, and dr rashid tanko computer is a deputy director of itl elections for the ndc is, is going to be joining us um, on zoom in a bit but just take a look at what um, how things are playing out from tomorrow dr rashid Tanko Computer is joining us right now. Good evening. Thank you so much for joining us here on Ghana tonight. Uh, good evening, Alfred. Let me say good evening to your cherished viewers and all our brethren across the country. Great. Now, uh, under normal circumstances, you're supposed to have the provisional voters register that is supposed to be re-exhibited or that is expected to be re-exhibited tomorrow by now. All right. Do you have the PVR that should be re-exhibited tomorrow online? Alfred, we, we don't have the provisional voter register as of now. I mean, uh, the, before I left office, we we're still making frantic effort uh, to see if the Electoral Commission could send us uh, the, the provisional register as uh, agreed at the last IPAC meeting. Uh, in fact, at the last IPAC meeting, it was agreed that they will give us a provisional register uh, within uh, two weeks or earlier. We later requested for it, and they came out with a statement that uh, they indicated two weeks, and that we should give them time within the two weeks for them to give us a provisional register. So today, when they issued a statement, and that tomorrow they will be exhibiting the register, and then uh, with all the its attendant uh, antecedences and all that, we thought they would have given us a register because you have not given the political, I don't know, of other parties, but I can speak for my party, the NDC. We have not received the provisional register, and yet they are going ahead to do the exhibition tomorrow. So I then mean, what are, are you going problems. to use to check, to identify the errors, if you don't have it? That is a, que that, that is a question, Alfred. That is a big question that uh, I believe this question is for the goals. Because they gave us a letter on Friday, and in the letter, they attach uh, the template to be used to collate the discrepancies if we identify some uh, in the provisional register. So I was laughing at them and said, these people, you have not given a register, and you have already given us a template to collate the, the discrepancies. Are you trying to say that you are anticipating some discrepancies in your provisional register you are going to give us? So we thought maybe over the weekend they would have given us a register. They didn't. And today we've been in the office, I left office very late, but still uh, the register was not available. But we have IPAC meeting tomorrow, and mm -hmm. uh, we'll take it up with them over there to find out what is the rationale behind that. 
given us a template with the register, and then you've gone further to announce that you are going to exhibit it uh, uh, online. But we still will have challenge with the online issues. I see, yes. Uh, then you, do you have or see any merit in those concerns raised about this online re-exhibition which starts tomorrow, especially those who are in areas where uh, there's no mobile phone connectivity or coverage or, or, or network reach as well, and other attendant issues. Is, 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 that, is that one that you identify with as a party and you're going to raise tomorrow at this IPAC meeting? Yes, Alfred. In fact, this their online thing is much ado about nothing. Because how many people understand this online thing in this country? My people in the rural communities, I'm from a rural area, and I can tell you three quarters of my people over there, they don't understand anything about online. They will not even go. They don't even understand. How are they even going to do it? Imagine the, the, the rural uh, populace. They don't understand this. This short quoting they have put in there, they don't understand it. And so, in fact, you are going to cut off a lot of voters from accessing the, their details. It's, it's, it's not going to work. It's much ado about nothing. I mean, they are just trying to, to whitewash the process and get away with it. And that's why we are telling them that, look, they shouldn't even bring the matter of cost because, look, democracy itself is costly. And they know it. We've been telling them. I mean, if you want Ghanaians to participate fully in this exhibition thing that you are talking about, you don't go this tangent. That is why our electoral system is, look, it's manual. It's fully manual. Everything about electoral, if you look at the framers of our 1992 constitution, they were very clear in their mind. They knew that, look, the illiteracy rate in this country is so small that you cannot introduce e-voting or e-collation or e-transmission, not to talk of now going e-exhibition. So you see, the Electoral Commission is gradually trying to introduce some electronic thing into our electoral system, which is not applicable per law. That is not what the framers of our constitution envisage. And so for them going this tangent, I think they must be stopped somewhere. Because it's just not the best. Going e-exhibition, e right. we haven't gone there yet. And as we rightly said, look, there are communities if you go up north, there are okay. certain communities you don't get mobile network at all completely, Alfred. Mm, no, there's no mobile tech, uh, this, uh, network over there. Sometimes before you make call, you have to climb a tree, <laughs> even a tall tree, to stand on top of a tree in order to access uh, a network to make call. And so such a community, what do you expect them to do? And when you are bringing e exhibition, what are they going to do? How are they going to access their data? Well, there are those who identify with this concerns indeed. So you go into this IPAC meeting tomorrow. Let's see how things play out. We will be there. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Ashitanko. Very well. Appreciate I'm it. I'm grateful. It's the Deputy Director of ITN Elections for the NDC. And th that concern about the um, lack of education on the usage of the USSD code that has been provided ahead of tomorrow, the exercise of the online re-exhibition starts tomorrow, plus these areas that don't have network connection is also another matter. But we hit the streets earlier today, and um, in fact, um, a number of you shared your concerns with us, but let's go straight into our People's Voice segment for tonight. Well, so Emmanuel Samani is uh, somewhere in the capital right now. He's connecting with us, um, with a number of people who are with him right now to share their thoughts on the People's Voice segment on this matter of the online re-exhibition of the voters registered by the Electoral Commission. Samani, what are they telling you? Well, thank you very much, Alfred. Good evening and welcome to The People's Voice. From the Oxford Street to the Accra, I am Emmanuel Samani. And as you know, according to the Electoral Commission, they would begin the re-exhibition of the voter register from tomorrow up until Saturday. Now, here's a twist. It's not going to be in person. Rather, it's going to be online via uh, the portal or a USSD. So we're on the streets of Accra to find out what people make of this move by the Electoral Commission to digitalize the re-exhibition of the voter register. So let's pick some thoughts right here, right now. So Chief, many thanks for your time. Uh, the EC, as usual, uh, are saying that this time around, the yeah, re-exhibition is going to be online. What do you make of it? 
Well, uh, to me, I think uh, Ghana is not yet there because, uh, as we all know, a lot of people are computer illiterate. So to do the exhibition uh, via uh, a short code or on the on the on the internet it would deprive a lot of people from actually checking or going to actually see if their names are on the register. I would have preferred the EC done it uh, the normal way, the way we used to know, so that many people can go and then uh, check their, their names on the register. I think that's all right. Thank you very much. Let's uh, pick some more thoughts on this move by the EC. Uh, let me just quickly engage this gentleman. Many thanks for your time, sir. You're live on Ghana tonight. Now, the Electoral Commission says they are doing their re-exhibition online via a website and via a USSD code. What do you make of this? I mean, I don't know. I don't know what to say about this, but I think that's another way of um, they're trying to steal the, another election again because, I mean, think about this. How many people do you think they have access to this, whatever they're trying to do? I mean, I don't want to say, I don't want to bring it in out of numbers, but the population here is only few people. I know this, you know, we are into this social media and everything, or whatever, whatever. People are now getting to that type of stuff, but how many people do you think they, they, they're going to have access to this kind, of, this kind of stuff? I mean, I feel like that's another way of uh, finding a way to still in election, and I think that's African for you. You know, Africa, you know, you know, they do things and they get away with it. You know, I mean, I want to know, the thing I want to know is when do they come out with this? Because if you're going to come out with this, then you have to talk about this maybe two, three years from now, before, you know, but you can't just come out and say you're going to do this type of stuff. It doesn't make no sense to me. But I mean, you know, usually some of the issues that come out, come out, come with uh, this in person has to do with like time. But in, in this case, you can be in the comfort of your home, your own space. Yeah, I, I, get, I get that. I get, I get that one. But like I said, how many people do you think have access to that? There's a lot of people here in this country that they don't even know how to access this mobile phone and stuff. Hmm. Manuel Somani then, and th those concerns are shared by a number of you as well online. And I thank you so much for the people's voice as always. Make a date and have your voice and have a say in what we say here on Ghana tonight. <laughs> Welcome back. Now, one person has been arrested in connection with the Mamo B violence, that incident that happened over the weekend. Now, two people were shot and six others are said to be in receiving treatment at the police hospital and Mamo B General Hospital following that clash between the two major political party supporters. Uh, this incident occurred near Mamo B market when sympathizers were having their weekly campaign walks the police, in its latest statement on the incident, said it is working around the clock to get all identified perpetrators arrested to face justice. This is happening barely 24 hours uh, after the, that particular incident. And the statement further went on to assure Ghanaians that investigations are ongoing into the disturbances. But this development raises concerns about how the police can also position itself to deal with these matters going into elections and security analyst Dr. Adam Bona is joining us right now. Uh, Dr. Bona, I appreciate you. Thank you so much for joining us here on Ghana tonight. And, and, and w with all of this as happening, not treating it as a case in isolation, how should this influence the police's strategy towards planning the security of the, of the elections ahead of us? Oh, yes. Thank you, Arthur. Uh, for me, good evening to your viewers. For me, I think that this uh, is, is, is a very sad situation, something that we should have been celebrating, if you ask me, because then you have members or supporters of the two big political parties in this country coming together to go on, you know, to undertake an event. And unfortunately, you have some friends who join them with firearms, and shoots, you know, a number of rounds into others, injuring some, uh, you know, in the, the most dastardly way. I think that I want to see the Ghana Police Service, and then I will pat them in the back. They, we are told they have managed to arrest one of them. They should fish the rest of them out, whichever holes they are, they should fish all of them out and make sure they are punished. But to answer you directly, Alfred, I think that the police would have to probably, uh, if possible, 
let the general public know, especially for some of these gatherings, uh, if some of these gatherings would take place among some of the, uh, or some of some of these activities, they would have to, the police should be notified of these activities so that they are able to send men around to put surveillance on, you know, miscreants who might want to take advantage of, of, of the impending elections, Alfred. I think this is, is important or else it looks like we have loose firearms in the hands of hoodlums and they might use it to perpetrate a lot of crimes if we are not careful. And, and, and what should be the, uh, that element of action to send that confidence, especially to the political parties, that indeed the police is on top of their game and, and they can have confidence in, in them to be impartial in exercising their duties in security on election day? I think that the police should descend on this miscreant, you know, severely. They should, you know, apprehend all of them. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter. We are told they are members of the, uh, you know, I don't know whether MPP or NDC, but I'm hearing uh, they belong to, you know, uh, the political parties. They should arrest them. It doesn't matter who you are, if you are a political party, if, we, if you are a supporter, if you are an executive member, it doesn't matter which position you belong to. And usually when the police, you know, effect such arrests, in the past, you would see, you know, big wigs and some of these parties coming up to say, release them, they are our boys. But I think that recent, you know, uh, activities of the police put some of these fears, allay some of these fears because uh, then they have ensured that those who must be arrested have been arrested. And we want to see the same as they've started arresting them. They should arrest them and, and parade them. We need to see them. Who are they? Uh, we, the videos are out there. Their faces have been shown. And I'm sure that the police would have to, uh, the states or the law should use them, uh, you know, as a form of uh, ensuring that others who would want to perpetuate the same crimes uh, would 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 probably stay away from it, or else you you would also fall uh, in the same you know soup as they have found themselves now. I see. Would you agree with those who point to some intelligence failure there on the part of the police? Because if you have MPP and NDC supporters going on a walk, no matter how you you expect that it's going to be peaceful, you should prepare for some of these incidents. Is it not? Well, I'm not too sure about intelligence failure. Really, I'm not too sure about that because I'm told it's not the first time. I'm told it, it's something that is a routine activity they do every weekend. Therefore, if it's a routine activity, who would have suspected that uh, some miscreants would be armed? And you can see who those who, when who did this, intended to do that. They intended to shoot into the atmosphere. They intended to shoot at people. They intended to harm people. But just like probably we had, uh, you know, the, the uh, former president, Mama did say, those who, you know, injured, fired, and, you know, uh, fired at those right. who were at this Ayawa's West War one thing, up to today, even though recommendations uh, right. you know, have been for them to be probably punished. They haven't been punished. And so as far as I'm concerned, I wouldn't want to say it's an intelligence failure. Probably now the police should be more, uh, they, should, they should let us know that when these things are going to happen, they cannot just happen without they being informed of some of these activities so that right. they would have their men around to ensure that everyone, you know, is safe around such uh, vicinity when the activity is taking place. Adamana, appreciate you. Thank you so much for joining us here on Ghana tonight, Dr. Adamana is really on On behalf of the rest of the team, I want to say thank you so much for staying with us. Join us same time tomorrow for another conversation. I'm Alfred Akansi. Have a good night.